This is where Tesla starts getting serious. From its establishment back in 2003, the company's goal was always to make cars that would provide a credible alternative to mass market combustion engine models. Now, the company's initial contenders, the Model S and the Model X, showed what was possible in the pricey luxury segment, but it's the Model 3 that brings the Elon Musk global vision within reach of the man in the street. The reasonably well-heeled man in the street anyway. Prices started around £38,000 and that places this saloon plumb into the kind of BMW 3 Series Mercedes C-Class territory that it's sized to address. Now buyers in this segment haven't previously been offered a credible EV. Cars with full battery power tend to be based either on compact family hatches or on big luxury SUVs. But that's because in the past a customer of a volume segment executive model couldn't have tolerated the kind of relatively feeble real-world operating range that until now has characterized most all-electric models. Tesla has addressed that here with the dual motor variants at least and gives owners much greater access than they'd have with other brands to the super powerful public charging points needed for quick battery replenishment. But the Model 3 is much more than just a showcase for electrified technology. In creating it, this American maker has battled with bankruptcy, struggled with quality control issues, and fought against production bottlenecks at a Californian plant in Fremont that until the Tesla era was resolutely low tech. Any one of those issues could have killed the company. Instead, it's delivered on its vision of affordable executive EV motoring and it's produced a US market bestseller that some think is the most important vehicle of the last decade. Going forward, it'll be the car that either makes or breaks Tesla. And we're gonna test it. It's a new experience, this, being at the wheel of a full EV that can really handle other zero emission battery models, including larger Teslas, go very fast when you stamp down your right foot and they manage not to lurch about too much through the bends because of their low down centrally mounted battery placements. But as for cornering finesse, well, forget about it. There's a reason why all volume EVs uh, designed to date have either been compact hatches or SUVs. Uh, those are market segments full of buyers with little enthusiasm for throwing their cars around. Uh, none of the brands involved have yet dared to make an EV sports saloon a contender like this Model 3. Trust Tesla to be the first. You can see the reasons for reticence. After all, there, there's so much for an automotive engineer to overcome in pursuit of a car that might appeal to someone who's used to sharp driving dynamics in a conventional fast four-door, particularly in this case. Segment leading driving range, a necessity for any new Tesla, means a prodigiously sized and therefore a prodigiously heavy battery. And that's what we have here as part of a pack that is, sure enough, placed low and centrally on the skateboard style chassis but that still means that the driver has to sit on top of the thing and therefore be positioned around 50 millimeters higher than in a combustion engine rival and that emphasizes the early onset of body roll in a way that you simply wouldn't normally notice. And then there's the issue of throttle linearity and power delivery. Uh, the neck-snapping, switch-like throttle responses that typify some EVs become tiresome very quickly. And torque steer, that's an affliction uh, that we haven't seen on performance cars since the overblown, under-tired, turbo hot hatches of the 80s, has in recent times made an unwelcome return in various uh, zero-emission segment models. They struggle with the fact that every ounce of motor torque is delivered from the millisecond you touch the throttle, in some cases throwing the front end of the car about like a bucking bronco as a result. Other EVs merely spin their speed uselessly away from rest on anything but a bone-dry surface.
As if all that wasn't enough, Tesla is being run by visionaries who seem to prefer a future in which their owners weren't imposed on to actually drive their cars at all as the company continues its relentless pursuit of autonomous driving technology. Yet Elon Musk and his team clearly like a challenge, especially one that's been so clearly shirked by the established brands who can no longer ignore the threat that this Californian automaker poses. So heads were hunted, uh, test tracks were pounded and budgets were broken in order to create the kind of Model 3 that would make competitors and their buyers sit up and take notice. Previously, we've reviewed Tesla's products as EVs. It's a measure of the importance of the one that we have here, that we have to judge it by more conventional standards, as you would if you were considering it as an alternative to the BMW 3 Series, the Mercedes C-Class, and the Audi A4 mid-sized executive saloons that it wants to target. Uh, will a keen driver miss the sound of a classic engine throbbing away up front? Well, of course they would, but the simple truth is that the vast majority of cars sold in this segment don't use such a thing. In this car there's actually a whole new driving dynamic in play if you can be bothered to adjust yourself to it. Uh, the sensitivity of your right foot for example becomes of vital importance. It replaces clutch pedal or paddle shift technique and coordination. Uh, for sure it is strange not to have an engine note orally guiding you through your various driving tasks but after a while in a Model 3 you might begin to find the absence of that soundtrack to be equally enriching, helping to focus your mind on things like steering feel, cornering angles and the way that the car's responding beneath you. At which point, what will you feel here? Well, superbly accurate steering for a start. It's in a different league to anything that the brand's produced before, or indeed anything that we've previously experienced in an EV. But it still lacks the final, really fearsome element that's integral to a good European rack. Uh, then there are the brakes. Uh, those are less grabby. They're more natural feeling in this case than in any other electric vehicle we've tested. And refinement that uh, when you come to listen more closely, isn't actually as all-encompassingly quiet as he first thought. Tire roar and wind noise around the frameless doors are both of a slightly higher order than we'd expected to find in a current generation executive saloon. Uh, we accept that sensors here are heightened because of the lack of a rumbling engine up front, but that should surely make rolling refinement an even greater priority for Tesla's engineers. What about that weight issue though? The sort of thing that usually sees electric vehicles lurching over speed humps, crashing through potholes and shifting bulk uncertainly about uh, through tighter corners at speed. Well, here there's little of that. In fact, if you somehow didn't know that this was an electric vehicle, you'd be unlikely to guess the fact from the way that it rides the bumps or takes the turns. When you're cornering quickly, you're certainly aware of this car's extra weight uh, your senses are heightened by the slightly higher seating position, uh, but outside of a racetrack, it really isn't much of an issue. And that's thanks to the low center of gravity and the near perfect 4852 front to rear weight distribution. You are more likely to notice that the wishbone front uh, multi-link rear suspension is set rather on the firm side, but that's also true with plenty of segment rivals. Unfortunately though, here it can't be embellished with the kind of adaptive damping system that Tesla just doesn't want to offer at this price point. More positives are accrued by the impressively well-modulated throttle, although it is still prone to lurch the car forward like a startled rapid if you use it without due care. If you were to it against the bulkhead of this top performance spec variant, you'd reach 60 miles an hour in just 3.2 seconds. Forget uh, M3s and C63s, that is Ferrari fast. That's the stat today anyway. Tomorrow this car might be even quicker and that is courtesy of the over-the-air drivetrain software updates that uh, without fanfare Tesla simply adds to its customers' cars as it goes along. Uh, like the one that uh, recently increased the top speed of this performance variant from 155 to 162 miles an hour. There is something rather wonderful about the thought that the Model 3 that you left powering up in the garage last night might not be the same one that you'll drive tomorrow. 
This performance derivative is further embellished by larger 20-inch wheels shod with bespoke Michelin P44S tyres and Brembo competition-style brakes uh, of the uh, famous ludicrous driving setting that releases all electrical restraints on top Model S or Model X variants and simply hurls them at the horizon. Uh, there's no sign here. Uh, that is all rather yesterday in Tesla's terms. Instead, for this car, the tech team engineered in something much better a selectable track mode. Uh, now this activates a kind of torque vectoring system that shuttles torque between the front and rear axles to offer either more or less cornering rotation as needed. Plus, there's a dramatic increase in regenerative braking to capture extra energy more efficiently and the addition of what the brand calls a vehicle dynamics controller. Now that eases back the normally quite intrusive traction and stability control systems so that they allow more slip. So much so in fact that pro driver circuit corner drifting is even possible. Now this kind of driving can be rough on the car's cooling system so track mode recalibrates that to cool the car more aggressively and proactively. With this kind of speed and performance potential, uh, you'd want a car with all-wheel drive in a climate like ours. And true to form, Tesla provides it, courtesy of the dual motor powertrain, which is also shared by the other top version of this Model 3, uh, the less focused but more energy conscious long range variant, uh, for which the speed stats are rest to 60 in 4.4 seconds en route to 145 miles an hour. Ah uh, yes, range. Well, uh, you'll probably want to know about that. Tesla no longer wants to talk about the battery capacity of its cars, but most in the industry pitch that of the dual motor Model 3 package to be somewhere between 75 and 88 kilowatt hours, uh, the kind of thing that would be needed to support the sort of industry leading WLTP rated range figures that Tesla's claiming here. 329 miles for this performance version and 348 miles for the long range variant. Combining that with the kind of uh, speed potential that we've just referenced is easier to comprehend once you understand a little bit more about how this car's dual motor powertrain works. Um, it's two drive units which together produce 335 kilowatts or 449 bhp of power are programmed to constantly shift power from front to rear to keep each motor in its power and efficiency sweet spot. One motor is geared for quick acceleration and the other is tuned for efficient high-speed cruising. Now, so effective is this whole setup that the normal penalty for extra weight, uh, the potential reduction that you'd expect in operating range, has been easily overcome. We do have to point out at this juncture that arguably the most important Model 3 variant, the far more affordable entry-level standard range plus version that most customers will choose, uh, uses a quite different rear-driven format. Its powertrain is made up of a single 180 kilowatt motor mated to a battery pack that, uh, depending on who you believe, is somewhere between 55 and 60 kilowatt hours in size. A smaller battery does, of course, deliver a smaller driving range. In this case, it's WLTP rated at 254 miles, although that's still better than Audi or BMW can manage with any of their EVs. Uh, the performance stats are still satisfyingly rapid though. The 60 Sprint occupies 5.3 seconds en route to 140 miles an hour. What else? Uh, well, there's no driving mode system of the kind a combustion engine competitor in this segment would offer. Uh, there are just three steering settings, comfort, standard or sport, and two acceleration modes, sport and the rather cringily named chill. Uh, you can activate a slip start setting that eases the car away if you happen to be stuck on snow, mud or sand. And as usual with a Tesla, you can select a creep function if you want the kind of creep forward feel that you get from a conventional mechanical gearbox when you push this car's single speed electronic gear selector stalk into drive. We mentioned regenerative braking earlier. Uh, you can't control that with steering wheel paddles in the way that you can with rival EVs. Uh, there are simply two screen selectable options. Low, uh, which minimizes retardation when you lift off the throttle, and standard, uh, which increases it. Uh, select the latter setting and you'll find that uh, uh, you only really need to use the brake pedal for hard stops or when you're bringing the car to a complete halt. Model 3 also dispenses with other driving control features that you might be familiar with. A handbrake, a 
an ignition key and a starter button, for example. Since this is a Tesla, we should not only talk about how you can drive it, but also how it can potentially drive itself, courtesy of the eight cameras, 12 ultrasonic sensors, and the forward-facing radar that activate its autopilot system with integrated auto steer function. Autopilot will position the car centrally within its lane, keep to a chosen speed, regulate the distance to the vehicle in front, and even perform lane changes automatically. Now for that latter function, you just flick the indicator stalk in the direction that you want to go, and once the camera system has given you the all clear, you're automatically steered over into the next lane. All you have to do for uh, autopilot functionality to be operative is to keep your hands on the wheel at all times. Times. Now, if you're using that system, do make sure that that's all you do. Even fractional, unintended steering inputs will disable the system. And that's a setup that can occasionally overreact to cars around you that the cameras have only just detected. Room for improvement then, but then that's just what Tesla has in mind. Pay the extra to future-proof your Model 3 with the brand's full self-driving capability software package and your car will receive ongoing over-the-air up updates that will add in fresh new elements of autonomous driving kit as legislation allows it. As the brand knows to its irritation, these laws can vary quite a lot, country to country. Uh, for example, the summon system, uh, which this extra pack will give you, uh, which allows you to stand outside the car and park it remotely using your smartphone, well, that's much more sophisticated in the US. There, if you uh, return from shopping unsure as to your car's location uh, after you've left the Model 3 in a busy car park, uh, then a click on the summon option will see the car drive out and find you, provided you're only parked a few parking rows away. Uh, but much more than that is in store for those of the Teslarati who don't mind surrendering their full driving duties to the car. Ultimately, the plan is that all you'll ever have to do is to get in and get out of your Tesla, whichever Tesla you've bought. It'll even know where you want to go if you've programmed your movement into its online calendar. So you get the idea here. Other brands are thinking of this kind of technology. Tesla is actually going out and delivering it, or at least where it's allowed to anyway. The way that this Californian company tells it, buying into a Model 3 is a starting point for a whole new kind of automotive life. Maybe it is, maybe you're not quite ready for it. It's coming though, and this car reassures us that there's at least something in that future to look forward to. It's a mark of Tesla's brand identity that even someone unacquainted with EVs would probably recognize this car's maker. They might perhaps be less likely to recognize it as a Model 3, although on closer inspection, the cues are quite distinct, although they're still very much EV orientated. Starting here at the front, where this more affordable Tesla design sees no need for the decorative front grille that aimed to ease the Tesla transition for Model S and Model X customers graduating over from something more conventional. A little overtaking presence has been lost as a result. Uh, those cars were hatchbacks. This, in contrast, is Tesla's first saloon, and it's likely to be its only one, at least for the conceivable future. Now that's intended to help position it against the strong sellers in the mid-sized executive market that uh, Tesla wants to target, cars like the BMW 3 Series, which is slightly longer and narrower than this Model 3, although not by much. Uh, from the side, you notice the short bonnet. That's facilitated by the skateboard-style chassis, which locates the drivetrain and batteries as low as possible in the car, enhancing interior space and lowering the center of gravity. Teslarati will notice a lower waistline than that of the larger Model S, but an almost equally large glass area with even more glass overhead, courtesy of a standard two-piece panoramic roof. And that embellishes a high arching roof line that means you're very unlikely to lose this car in a crowded parking lot. A mid-level crease flows uh, below the flush-fitting silver door handles with a shorter, higher one emphasizing the rear haunches. Plus, a lower crease separates arches that house 18-inch wheels on the standard and the long-range versions uh, with larger 20-inch rims fitted to this performance model. 
From almost any angle, this car looks more like a hatch than a saloon, including from the rear. It's certainly very Model S-like. As with that car, Tesla has mounted the charging flap uh, neatly into the offside rear light cluster, and this time uh, they've made the socket inside CCS compatible, so a wider number of uh, public charging stations can be used. As usual, of course, what's more important is what you can't see. Tesla has seen the pressing need to keep weight down to manageable levels, and it's done so. This dual motor all-wheel drive model weighing in at 1847 kilos with a single motor standard range plus base version quite impressively tipping the scales at only 1645 kilos, only 120 kilos more than an equivalent diesel BMW 320D. That's primarily down to the use of aluminium for several panels, uh, the boot, the bonnet, the doors and the roof, all of them particularly sleek, hence the impressively slippy drag coefficient of just 0.23 CD. Right, let's take a look inside. Actually, you don't need to get inside to see the enormous media screen, which, as we're going to see, dominates the cabin. Uh, there's no keyless entry of the kind that you get in Tesla's larger models, which does seem like a backward step, nor do the door handles spring open as you approach, as they would do on a rival Jaguar I-Pace. Instead, you have either to use this uh, easily mislaid RFID card, which has to be wafted across a sensor on the B pedal to gain entry, or you have to program in your phone. Then you press on the larger part of the silver door release. Once inside, you find yourself seated in a cabin that's more minimalist than a Scandinavian loft. Well, in terms of button clutter anyway, uh, there's absolutely nothing minimalist about this enormous 15-inch central touchscreen onto which virtually all the driving, comfort and infotainment features that you'll need have been located. Beyond this, uh, operating control provision has been kept to the absolute minimum. Uh, don't even bother looking for a gear stick, a starter button, a handbrake switch, or physical ventilation controls. Even the vents themselves are pretty hidden. You don't get any kind of instrument cluster either. Now, legislation requires that Tesla provides a proper hazard warning button. That's located up here near the frameless rear view mirror with an SOS switch. But otherwise, you're limited to a couple of unmarked scroll wheels here on the steering wheel spokes and also two wheel mounted stalks uh, the left one for the wipers and the indicators the right for gear change functions Minimality is all well and good, but a potential premium segment European buyer of this car is ideally going to want all that to be accompanied by the kind of cabin quality and richness of interior design that the posh German brands, along with Jaguar, Volvo and Lexus, now provide in this segment. Tesla has made great strides forward in this regard in recent years, but we still can't pretend that to be what you get here. Uh, to be frank, the uh, stripped out feel doesn't really help in that regard, and neither does the shiny finish of the vegan leather upholstery in practically bleached white in this particular instance. As for Tesla's curious insistence on displaying the usual driving instruments on the nearer third of the central touchscreen, well, in our view, that would be fine if this layout was supplemented by a head-up display, but you can't have that, so you have constantly to be flicking your eyes away from the road and looking at the monitor. Adapting to this isn't difficult, uh, and the way that the driving graphics show surrounding traffic really is very clever, but the whole setup isn't optimum in the way that such a clean sheet design really could have been. Still, compensatory technology is absolutely dripping from every menu, and pinch and swipe action is accessible through this enormously capable central screen. It's the first in a Tesla to be landscape rather than portrait orientated. Uh, your main access point uh, for features is along the bottom of the screen with uh, rather small icons for things like ventilation, seat navigation, and music functions, while the right hand corner car option clicks you through to the main driving menu screen. That not only connects you through to your various acceleration, steering mode and regenerative braking options, but it's also the screen that you're going to need to operate basic things like the mirrors, uh, the steering column adjustment and even to open up the glove box.
Now there's lots here that we really like. The clever camera setup, uh, the music system that's designed to function with a Spotify style online music library that can locate any track or artist you care to name. And the way that the optional Wi-Fi package with its easy web access can allow you to easily stream from Netflix and YouTube. Once full self-driving is approved by the regulators, Tesla says it'll activate the screen so that both front seat passengers will be able to settle back and view films from these and other sources on the move when the autopilot autonomous camera driven capability is selected. Uh, plus there's still no better navigation system than the one you get in a Tesla. Thanks to a 4G Google Maps connection, it can show you traffic build up points and Google Earth images. Plus of course, it's the point from which you'll be planning your journeys uh, with displays predicting the percentage of battery charge which will remain at your required destination and also the amount that you'll be left with on returning home. There's more of course you knew there would be. An arcade option allows you to play away to your heart's content when the car's stationary. Chess, Asteroids, Lunar Lander and Beach Buggy Racing are just a few of the screen games on offer. In the toy box section it gets sillier. Now with rival brands merely being able to draw pictures on the screen with your fingertip might be considered enough of a nod to entertainment if you're stuck in a traffic jam. But here, as well as that option, there's much more. Uh, Depending on your mood, you can direct the screen to show a crackling fireplace. You can use it to explore the surface of Mars or to activate a Santa mode with a chirpy tune and jingling sound effects to get you in the festive spirit. There's even a whoopee cushion screen. Yes, really, with different styles of fart delivery. Any of those that you really like can be activated to replace the usual indicator clicks if you want to prank the next person who's likely to be driving your Model 3. Hours of fun are absolutely guaranteed. Let's get back to being sensible. Uh, the driving position, well, if you like the kind of hunkered down stance that you get in a 3 Series, the Model 3 can't provide that. Uh, that's because you're perched on top of a bank of batteries beneath the floor and the seat is positioned about 50 millimeters higher than the segment norm. Now this isn't quite enough for the car to feel SUV-like, but along with the panoramic windscreen and the low waistline, it certainly helps with all-round visibility, which is very welcome since otherwise that might be a fraction problematic thanks to these chunky A pillars and the slightly restricted over the shoulder view that you get rearwards. Uh, the seat itself it includes lumbar adjustment but some of our testers did still feel it managed to be a little short on lower back support. Cabin storage is obviously aided by the lack of the kind of enormous central transmission tunnel that on any ordinary car would stretch up between the seats into the center console. Uh, Tesla has used that freed up space to create a huge double-lidded central box, uh, pull up these two uh, surface flaps and an interim middle one to access that. A couple of USB ports sit almost invisibly within. The flaps incidentally have to be closed gently onto their magnetic catches. Uh, try to slam them shut and they'll spring up again, accompanied by a pedantic center screen message admonishing you for your ham-fistedness. Uh, further back sit two cup holders which ought to be covered but which aren't, and behind them is a further deep illuminated storage box with a left out tray and a 12 volt port. Um, also illuminated, rather curiously, are the door pockets. They're not very big, but they will each hold a decent sized bottle of water and at least you get them, unlike in the Model S. Uh, you'll also find that the glove box is not especially large, once you figure out how to open it that is. And here's one of our favorite touches, these lovely two piece magnetic strips that fit over the sun visor mirrors. The vanity light actually activates uh, as you pull away the bottom part. Time to take a look in the back. Now, a uh, relatively long wheelbase by class standards should help here. At first glance here, it all seems good, especially compared to the cramped rear quarters you get in a rival BMW 3 Series or Mercedes C-Class. Uh, take a seat though, and you find that raised floor we mentioned matched with low set seats, and the result being that you sit with your knees slightly higher than they would normally be. Uh, once you adjust to that though, you'll find that legroom isn't bad. Um, one six footer can just about sit behind another, thanks in part to these uh, scalloped seat backs here, although the fact that you uh, can't slide your feet under the seat in front is something of a limiting factor. 
Now, strangely, uh, the centre-seated passenger, who would normally have drawn the short straw in a car of this kind, is arguably uh, rather better placed here, thanks to the lack of a central transmission tunnel and to the way that it's possible to slide your feet beneath the centre console. Headroom is good, even with this standard two-part glass roof fitted, which uh, helps by these little rear quarter light windows, fills the cabin with light, although it doesn't come with a sliding blind for the times when you want the interior to feel, well, just a bit cosier. A stitched door handles and more illuminated door pockets add extra classy touches, plus there are twin central vents, uh, rather small seat back pockets. Uh, there's a central armrest here with twin cup holders and overhead there are pop out coat hooks and there are ceiling mounted reading lights. Finally, let's take a look in the boot, or one of them anyway, because there's no need for an engine up front. A frunk compartment sits in the nose. Uh, we're going to get to that once we've seen what's on offer back here, which looks like a tailgate design, but isn't. Now, in some ways, uh, this setup is preferable to that, thanks to an ingenious hinged arrangement that sees the boot lid opening particularly widely and leaving an admirably low access slip, though rainwater does dribble in around the seals when it's wet. The capacity on offer here, 425 litres, is 55 litres less than you get from a BMW 3 Series or Audi A4, but only fractionally less than a Mercedes C-Class. Anyway, it's a good square usable space with a recessed area on the left and a deep well under the cargo base for the charging leads uh, that could also take other small items that you might not want sliding around on the boot floor. On that subject, tie-down points are rather curiously missing, nor do you get bag hooks or a 12-volt port. If you need more room, the rear seat back can be folded 60-40, although unfortunately no boot levers are provided for the process. So you have to go around to the uh, passenger compartment and release the seat shoulder catches. With everything flat, uh, you get a reasonably flat loading bed. We'll finish with a look at the frunk, the fruit, or whatever you want to call it, up front in the nose. Now, it can't quite swallow suitcases like the one in the Model S, but its 117 litre capacity is probably good for a couple of small squashy bags. So, who will buy this car? Well, quite a lot of people have in the US. At the time of this test, it was the American market's best-selling luxury car. Here, of course, the Model 3 will be far more of a niche player in its chosen market, that for mid-sized executive saloons of the BMW 3 Series, Mercedes C-Class genre. Uh, the price of the entry-level rear-driven single-motor standard range plus variant, pitched at £38,500 from launch, certainly places is this Tesla plumb in the middle of that category. Ideally though, you'd want one of the two dual motor all wheel drive variants which can go much further and faster between charges. Uh, either the long range model priced from launch at £47,000 or the top performance derivative that we're trying here, which from launch cost £52,000. All the prices that we've just quoted, by the way, are following deduction of the government's £3,500 plug-in car grant and all are way less than anything Tesla has previously charged for one of its cars here. Uh, to give you a little bit of perspective on that, the cheapest available versions of its larger Model S luxury saloon and its Model X luxury SUV are pitched either just below or just above the £80,000 price point. Still, you'd expect to have to pay a premium for those larger designs. Tesla says that a Model S, for example, has 1,500 customizable configurations, and that's compared with just 100 in this Model 3. Right, uh, time to help you peruse the market and look at direct alternatives from other brands. Now, arguably the most direct rival to this Tesla comes from the new Volvo-owned Polestar brand in the form of the company's Polestar 2 model. But that car costs around £50,000 and therefore it competes only with the top dual motor versions of this Model 3. We might also point out that the Polestar is a hatch rather than a saloon and it can't go as far on a single charge as the all 
all-wheel drive versions of this Model 3. The BMW i4, due for launch in 2021, is a saloon, and it's very much in the mold of the Model 3, but again, it's only targeted at the dual-motor versions of this Tesla, and that is not where the volume is in this segment. If you happen to be looking at the base single-motor Standard Range Plus version of this Model 3 saloon, really direct alternatives are very thin on the ground. There are EVs based on compact hatches or EVs based on mid-sized luxury SUVs. Uh, there is virtually nothing in between, particularly if you want to spend less than £40,000 and absolutely nothing if you want a zero emissions mid-sized premium sedan. If that is the kind of body shape that you'd like and you're uh, seeking alternatives to this Tesla, uh, then you'll have to choose a car that, at least to some extent, still burns some kind of fossil fuel. Now, we're going to get to those options in a minute, but uh, let's begin first with the full EVs prominent in the market at the time of this test, uh, the cars that a battery buyer might have on his or her radar. Our current favourite in the compact hatch zero emission segment is the Kia e-Niro. Now you might quite understandably be tempted by the fact that a base standard range plus Model 3 variant costs only £5,500 more than one of those. The Tesla is indisputably a far more special car, uh, though in single motor form it can't go quite as far as the Kia on a single charge. A top BMW i3 in S-Spec with a range extender engine fitted might also conceivably appeal. One of those would save you only around £2,000 over a base Model 3, but then you're starting to burn fossil fuels again. EV buyers looking at the dual motor all-wheel drive versions of this Model 3 are more likely to be people who previously were thinking thinking of blowing 65 to 80,000 pounds on the various premium mid-sized zero emission SUVs launched in recent times, uh, Jaguar's I-Pace, Audi's e-tron, uh, BMW's iX3 and the Mercedes EQC. All of these cars are fractionally more spacious and versatile than a Model 3, but not much. And none of them handle as well or will go as far as a dual motor version of this Tesla can manage on a single charge. In short, there's not much that's really comparable in the EV market. So let's shift perspectives and look at this car as Tesla wants us to as an alternative to a combustion engined mid-level premium badged smart saloon. Now we mentioned the 3 Series and the C-Class, so let's start with those. Uh, sporty variants of the volume diesel versions of each of those cars, the 320D M Sport and the C220D AMG line, uh, they cost uh, around about the same as an entry-level standard range plus Model 3 variant. Someone looking instead at a dual motor all-wheel drive long range Model 3, well they would be much more likely to be considering a C300DE plug-in diesel or a 330E plug-in petrol with top spec versions of both those cars is likely to save you only around £3,000. As for this performance spec Model 3, well, that's aimed at petrol people purely in search of power. Uh, someone who might perhaps otherwise have spent around £50,000 on a planet polluting Mercedes AMG C43 Formatic or a BMW M340i X Drive and gone slower in either car than would be possible in this Tesla. Of course, there are lots of other options in the segment. Audi's A4 is perhaps most obvious. One of those in volume 35 TDI S Tronic S Line diesel form would also cost around about the same as a standard range plus Model 3 variant, uh, while a sporty S4 TDI diesel is priced comparably to the two dual motor Model 3 variants. What else? Well, we think a Volvo S60 might possibly be a car on a likely Model 3 buyer's radar. Uh, the T5 petrol derivative costs around about the same as a standard range plus version of this Tesla, and the T8 twin engine plug-in petrol hybrid variant costs around about the same as the Model 3 long range. Uh, both of those S60 derivatives, though, it goes without saying, will cost you vastly more to run than this Tesla will as will something like a Lexus IS Hybrid or a Volkswagen Passat GTE plug-in, both of which in their plushest forms would cost around about the same as a Model 3 Standard Range Plus. And we could go on to talk about more conventional mid-sized premium saloons with ordinary petrol or diesel engines in the 35 to 40,000 pound segment, uh, cars like Jaguar's XE and Alfa Romeo's Giulia. But if you were looking at those kinds of cars, you probably wouldn't be considering this Tesla. 
Okay, so that's brief view on the market. Uh, if having considered that, you conclude understandably that there's nothing quite like a Model 3 and you want to consider actually buying or leasing one, then you're gonna need to know exactly how generous Tesla has been with the standard specification. So let's take a look at that now. And let's start with what's included on the base standard range plus Model 3 variant. Now the key feature here, of course, is the 15 inch center touchscreen, which seems seamlessly integrates media, navigation, communications, cabin control and vehicle data into one intuitive interface and throughout your ownership period over the air updates into it will add functionality, uh, will also enhance performance and will improve the driving experience of your car. As you expect, the screen is your access point to things like navigation, a DAB tuner and Bluetooth, plus lots more. Now, there's no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto option here, but Tesla has its own smartphone mirroring system, which works almost as well. What else? Well, you get a tinted panoramic glass roof in two parts with ultraviolet and infrared protection, 18 inch aero alloy wheels and power folding mirrors. Inside there's black premium vegan leather upholstery, 12 way power adjustable front seats, an auto dimming rear view mirror and four USB ports. Scroll down the center screen menu options and you'll find a host of little touches. Uh, the arcade and toy box games, which will entertain you if you're stuck in a traffic jam or you're waiting for a pickup and the clever sentry mode that you can activate as a guard to record any damage to your car, same when you've left it parked. Uh, should that happen, the Model 3's camera system will record the incident so you have evidence to help apprehend the perpetrator. Uh, other cameras can be used to record dash cam footage for the same kind of purpose. Tesla also includes its autopilot system on this car, which enables your Model 3 to steer, accelerate and brake automatically around other vehicles and pedestrians in its lane. Uh, you get what Tesla calls full self-driving capability as part of this with four key features. Firstly, your Model 3 will navigate using the autopilot system, which will give you automatic driving from motorway on-ramp to off-ramp, including interchanges and including overtaking slower cars. Secondly, there's an auto lane change feature which gives you automatic motorway lane changes. Uh, all you have to do is flick the indicator stalk in the direction that you want to go and once the camera system has given you the all clear then you are automatically steered over into the next lane. Thirdly, there's an auto park system which will help you to identify a parallel or perpendicular space and then steer your Tesla into it. And fourthly, there's a summon feature which will allow you to park your car using your smartphone while you're standing outside it, as you might want to do if, say, you're trying to get it into a very narrow space. Now, for the future UK legislation permitting, Tesla is promising further functionality that'll give your Model 3 a degree of automatic driving capability on city streets. It will allow it to recognize and respond to traffic lights and stop signs and it will, via an enhanced summon feature, allow it to come to find you in a car park if you're a few rows away and you can't find it. Brilliant. What else can you expect to find included if you opt instead for the more affordable of the two dual motor all wheel drive Model 3 variants, the long range derivative? Well, for a start, you'll get an upgraded premium audio system with 14 speakers, one subwoofer, two amps, and a more immersive sound. Plus, further kit additions include LED front fog lamps, heated front and rear seats, and a year's use of what Tesla calls a premium connectivity pack. Now, this will give you satellite maps with live traffic visualization, uh, in-car internet streaming for music and media, more frequent over-the-air updates, and an internet browser. We'll finish our perusal of standard kit with a look at what's included on this top performance variant, which of course has all of the long range derivatives features plus a package of others. Uh, a performance spec Model 3 like this one is recognizable by its carbon fiber rear spoiler, its lowered suspension, and these larger 20 inch performance wheels shod with bespoke Michelin P44S tires through the spokes of which you can glimpse the red calipers 
of the uprated braking system. Uh, inside there are aluminium alloy pedals and a selectable track mode. Now this special setting does quite a lot at the press of a single screen button. It shuffles torque between the front and rear axles for extra cornering traction. Uh, it will increase regenerative braking to capture extra energy more efficiently. Uh, thirdly, it recalibrates the cooling system to make it more effective and it also uses a vehicle dynamics controller to dial back the traction and the stability control systems so that they allow more slip. So much so in fact that pro driver circuit corner drifting is even possible. On to options. Uh, there aren't many. Uh, you can pay extra to specify a black and white coloured interior. Unusually for an EV, you can pay more for a tow hitch. This one's able to tug up to 910 kilos. And bear in mind that you'll almost certainly be paying Tesla extra for your choice of paint colour. This car's pearl white multi-coat finish is the only one that you get as standard. The others at extra cost are solid black, midnight silver metallic, deep blue metallic, or if you're prepared to pay £2,000 more, a rather lovely red multi-coat finish. We normally finish this section of the reviews by talking about safety. Now, in this case, we've already touched on that when briefing you on all the high-tech features of the autopilot system, which uses eight cameras, 12 ultrasonic sensors, and a forward-facing radar. Uh, these all combine to deliver an impressive roster of features. Uh, let's brief you on those we've not yet mentioned. There is autonomous brake of course, that's courtesy of what Tesla calls its forward collision warning and its automatic emergency brake systems. And as you would expect on a car of this price, there is a blind spot collision feature to stop you from pulling out when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. But Tesla has gone further than that. The thing we all love about electric cars is the instant acceleration they give, but that can get you into a lot of trouble if you hit the accelerator too hard when, uh, say, you're in a traffic jam or when you're parking. An obstacle-aware acceleration feature aims to take care of that for you. Now, if your Tesla senses that there's something like a car or a building in front of you, it will limit your acceleration if you accidentally tap on the accelerator too hard or you confuse the brake pedal with the accelerator, so enabling you to avoid an expensive collision. Uh, and there's more. Emergency lane departure avoidance will automatically steer the car back into your lane if the software thinks you're going to crash or veer off the road. Uh, then there's lane departure avoidance, and that's a system that was first introduced in the US to combat situations where Tesla drivers were engaging the car's traffic-aware cruise control and then moving lanes on the highway without turning signals and without their hands on the steering wheel. Uh, lane departure avoidance will admonish you for that sort of thing and if you keep on doing it then the system will eventually turn on your hazard lights and it will automatically slow the car down to 15 miles below either the speed limit or your current set speed. This feature can be turned on or off at will and it works between speeds of 25 and 90 miles an hour. Beyond all the camera stuff, it's worth pointing out that the Model 3 is also an intrinsically safe car and the recipient of a five-star rating from Euro NCAP. To get that, of course, it had to have all the usual passive safety features, pedestrian-friendly panel work, plus the usual stability and autonomous braking features, and of course, a full complement of airbags. On a dual motor model like this one, the second motor sits within the front subframe, attached via two mounts. It's designed to pivot backwards into a vacant space during a collision, better protecting the passenger compartment. Uh, it's clever and so much about this car is. Once upon a time as an EV buyer you bought a Tesla because of its vast advantage in operating range over any other battery powered car on the market. Today things are a little different. The 254 mile WLTP rated range of the volume single motor standard range plus version is actually about 25 miles less than you get from smaller family hatch sized EVs like Hyundai's Kona Electric and Kia's e Nero, and only fractionally more than the uprated E plus version of the Nissan Leaf. So yes, as was inevitable, the opposition has caught up. Switch your attention to a pricier dual motor all-wheel drive Model 3 variant like this one though, and something of Tesla's original advantage still remains. 
The performance variant that we're trying here manages a 329 mile WLTP rated reading, a figure that the alternative long range model increases to 348 miles. To give you some perspective on that, the best of the current crop of battery-powered luxury SUVs is Jaguar's I-Pace, that's WLTP rated at 292 miles, a Mercedes EQC manages 259 miles, a BMW iX3 uh, 249 miles, and an Audi e-tron Quattro 55 just 241 miles. What you'll actually get from any of those cars if you drive normally is slightly different, of course. Uh, if you want a rule of thumb, then think in terms of around 200 miles from a standard motor single range plus version and maybe 275 from a dual motor variant like this one. Although we are perfectly prepared to believe that you could improve on those figures by up to 20% with a little driving care. Bottom line, well, if you're buying a dual motor Model 3 like this performance variant, expect it to go around 35 to 50 miles further than any other EV on the market between charges, that's quite reasonable. Even if you stick with the single motor standard range plus version, there's still a compelling reason to choose a Model 3 over an EV from another brand, and that'll be obvious when the time comes to pull back the neatly disguised panel around the offside rear light cluster and replenish your battery power. Tesla is the only manufacturer that has had the guts to put itself on the line by going out and creating its own exclusive high power charging network. Uh, there were, at the time of this test, around 430 Tesla supercharger locations in the UK positioned along major routes. Uh, the most southerly one is at Lifton in Devon and the most northerly one is at Aviemore in Scotland. Uh, each of these will allow you to charge the battery up to 80% capacity in as little as 30 minutes and each is only accessible to Tesla drivers. On top of that uh, there are the superchargers fitted to the brand's dealer network and also the company has installed a further 550 less powerful but still very useful so-called destination chargers in clubs, hotels and other public locations around the country. Those are also exclusive to Tesla drivers and they're there to charge your car over a few hours. In other words, if you drive a Model 3 or indeed any other Tesla, you're far more likely to be able to undertake a longer trip with mid-journey charging at a convenient point than you would be if you bought a different EV from another mainstream or premium brand. Now that uh, really is a crucial advantage, particularly with the current patchy state of the European public EV charging infrastructure especially as this Tesla can also be recharged at nearly all the other places that other makers' electric vehicles can plug in, or absolutely all of them, if you purchase the optional CHAdeMO adapter that your Tesla Center will sell you. Uh, earlier Tesla models, which lacked the necessary CCS adapter, couldn't do this. In terms of other charging locations, your best bet is to find one of the 150 kilowatt Ionity charging points, around 40 of which will be up and running in the UK uh, by the end of 2020. Uh, you're more likely though to come across one of the longer existing 50 kilowatt public charging points, uh, which will charge up to 80% in around 75 minutes. Uh, even those can be quite difficult to find though, depending on where in the country you happen to live. At the time of this test, there were 8,300 118 public charging locations in the UK, but only 3,178 of them were 50 kilowatt chargers. Almost all of the remainder were lower powered outlets. Websites like ZapMap are good for helping you find your nearest public charger, or you can use your Model 3's infotainment screen to organize your journey between charge stations. Fortunately, most of your charging will be done at home. Once you've uh, had fitted the seven kilowatt wall box that you really couldn't own this car without, Tesla will sell you its own wall box, which costs 460 pounds plus installation charges, and it looks very slick, but unfortunately it doesn't qualify for the usual government grant towards purchase. Uh, stick to a more common wall box supplier like uh, Chargemaster, and you'll probably be paying around 360 pounds all in after subtraction of that grant. Obviously, those costs will rise if uh, significant electrification work is needed to get an appropriate power supply out of your garage. 
Once installed, a uh, wall box works out at an hourly charge rate of 11 kilowatts, uh, enough to replenish a dual motor Model 3 variant like this one uh, from empty in just over eight hours. Uh, although the process will be quicker uh, with a smaller battery of the single motor standard range plus version. With this dual motor model, uh, that means that the usual EV manufacturer claim of full overnight charging is only just about justified and it won't add up at all if you happen to have a late night and an early start. Uh, for reference, if you connected this Model 3 up to an ordinary household three-pin plug, uh, then it would take the best part of two days to charge itself from empty. As usual with electric cars, there's an app to allow you to set charging times using your smartphone, uh, and the same app can also allow you to preset the climate in your car before you reach it, so you don't have to strain the battery with a big initial need for cabin heating or cooling when you get in. And that same app can also quickly tell you where you can find a nearby Tesla supercharging and destination charging location. As for charging costs, well, at the time of this test in autumn 2019, Tesla's supercharger locations were billing at the rate of 24 pence per kilowatt hour. If an existing Tesla owner has referred you to this American brand and that's been recognized as part of your initial purchase, then you'll have an initial package of free supercharging credit the center screen's charging section can even tell you how much a supercharging visit will cost if you use it to completely replenish your battery. Uh, the cost of less powerful non-Tesla public charges varies a bit. Uh, some are completely free and a growing number of larger businesses and workplaces offer charging points with free access throughout the day. Obviously, the cost of charging at home will vary with the tariff you're on, but as a guide, it'd be typical for a full at-home charge of a Model 3 to cost around £10 at typical electricity rates. Compare that to the £70 or £80 you spend to fill the tank of a comparable petrol or diesel executive model. Yes, even a plug-in hybrid one. It's generally estimated that the cost of running an electric car is around three pence per mile. Compare that to 12 to 14 pence per mile for an equivalent petrol or diesel vehicle. The difference over combustion engine costs would widen further if you were able to plug your car in at lower off-peak electricity rates. Uh, there is a scheduled charging part of the center screen's charging section that helps you to do that. It would be even better, of course, if you were able to charge up using solar energy that's generated from the panels on the roof of your house. Now, if your home does have the solar charging panels that work with a photovoltaic system, then the car can be set up to charge preferentially using sunlight sourced electricity, and it can even be set up to charge in line with uh, forecast phases of sunshine. Tesla makes solar panels, by the way, and they can also provide a Powerwall home battery for an extra £6,350 uh, to conveniently store all the energy that any brand of solar paneling will produce. With all we've said about potential charging issues, it's possible that we're painting an unnecessarily bleak picture here. Obviously, it's quite unlikely that a typical Model 3 owner will be running this model as an only car, and we're perfectly aware that the average person's daily round-trip commute is about a tenth of the operating range of this Tesla. Oh yes, range, now we're back to that. Other EVs provide almost endless driver tools for maximizing that, uh, things like efficiency modes, eco settings, and primarily uh, a proliferation of brake regeneration options that are aimed at allowing you to either reduce or increase the amount of energy harvested as you slow the car. On Model 3, there are only two regenerative braking options, standard or low, and that's it. In one way, that's quite refreshing. Uh, in another, it is rather surprising that Tesla doesn't feel the need to involve the driver uh, more in the energy harvesting process. If you can cope with having the regenerative braking set on the higher standard mode, in which case the reduction in speed when you come off throttle really is quite sudden, it can make uh, really quite a significant difference to the distance that you'll be able to travel between charges. Um, it allows the powertrain to more effectively reclaim spent energy as you cruise, as you slow, or when you stop. In fact, on a hilly road with regeneration set to standard, it's possible to gain most of the energy back that you used going uphill through regenerative braking on the way down. 
As you'd expect, the car's central screen uh, offers lots of data to help to plan your electric driving life. Uh, we've already mentioned how both this monitor and the associated app can brief you on your plug-in program and on charging locations. And of course, there are the usual real-time battery status readouts, but your Model 3 can certainly be a lot more proactive than that put a destination into the navigation system and it'll helpfully tell you what proportion of your battery charge uh, you'll still have when you reach where you're going and also the proportion that you'll have when you arrive back home. Now if the destination that you've chosen can't be reached with the driving range that you have available then uh, some charging points along route will be selected for you. Once you set off, the calculations continue based on your driving style, so uh, you'll be advised if, for example, you're cruising at too fast a speed to reach the destination on the charge available. And a detailed graphical readout in the screen's energy section can show your success or otherwise in driving frugality over the last 5, 15 or 30 miles, along with both instant and average energy consumption figures. What else might you need to know? Um, well, maybe you'll be interested in the fact that as an EV vehicle owner, you'll be exempt from the London congestion charge. And at current rates, that would save a London commuter £11.50 every day. Um, of more importance will be the news that EVs are exempt from car tax. And that would save a Tesla driver between £145 and £210 a year compared to an equivalent combustion engine model. Uh, for company car users, uh, electric vehicles offer potentially huge tax savings because they incur 0% benefiting kind taxation. As for ownership peace of mind, well, the Tesla warranty, that's four years and 50,000 miles, has pluses and minuses compared to the usual three-year 60,000 mile packages offered by obvious rivals. Uh, the battery and drive unit are covered by their own eight-year 120,000 mile warranty. Not only does this cover you against faults, but it also guarantees a minimum 70% retention of battery capacity throughout the plan's duration. Maintenance is obviously more straightforward than it would be for a combustion engine model. An electric vehicle does, after all, have 20% fewer moving parts. Uh, there's no fuel tank, there's no exhaust system, and there's obviously no internal combustion engine. Uh, you wouldn't uh, think that, though, to look at the service intervals needed by some of this car's direct rivals. A uh, Jaguar I-Pace, for example, needs a garage visit every 21,000 miles. With the Model 3, no annual service is required. Owners only need to bring their cars in to check certain components at specific intervals. Over-the-air updates and remote diagnostics will help to make some smaller maintenance jobs easier to carry out, and Tesla's mobile service technicians make your ownership life more convenient. Less good news is found in an across-the-board insurance rating for the Model 3 that's a top-of-the-shop group 50, which really is ludicrous. Brokers, it seems, just don't like electric cars, or most of them don't anyway. No. More recently, LV has uh, launched a specific package for EV drivers, and Tesla has negotiated a special deal with Direct Line that a lot of its owners use. Ultimately, though, you'll probably pay more to insure your Model 3 than you would uh, with a direct rival. Uh, uh, if you let Tesla guide you, uh, you'll find that it won't be too much more. Uh, you might also expect gloomy news when it comes to the issue of residual values. Uh, EVs did, after all, used to sink faster than the Belgrano in terms of depreciation. As the market's matured, though, things have certainly improved. Independent experts are saying that a standard range plus model will retain around 66% of its original value after three years and 36,000 miles, while for this performance version, the figure will rise to around 72.8%. And what about the green issues? Now, some in the green lobby get very angry about the whole pure electric car zero emissions ethos, reckoning that this ignores the well-to-wheel demands of supplying the electricity that powers cars of this kind. Well, we'd respond to those people uh, by pointing out that they uh, completely overlook the fact that CO2 figures for conventional cars fail to take into account the logistical costs of getting fuel to the pump. Still, if you are one of those environmental 
are a conscious folk will tell you that using a well to wheels calculation based on typical use of the UK's energy grid, taking an average UK grid CO2 contribution of 367 grams per kilowatt, the burden of filling your batteries in this car would result in a theoretical 79 grams per kilometer of CO2 being released into the atmosphere. That's certainly good, but it's some way from being completely green. That's a comment that you could apply to electric vehicle engineering as a whole. Lithium ion batteries aren't recyclable in the way that the fuel cells used in hydrogen powered vehicles are. Uh, currently, when EV vehicles are reaching the ends of their lives, uh, the batteries are being reused as electricity storage buffers. After that though, they can't simply be scrapped because lithium ion has explosive elements. So those batteries instead are simply being buried in landfills. Uh, uh, which is hardly sustainable in the long term for humankind. But then, nor is the pollution caused by combustion power. If you see the EV solution as the lesser of the two evils, and your choice of a battery power model has to be from the uh, premium segment, then we think you'll find plenty to interest you here. A lot of people have a lot to say about Tesla and its co-creator Elon Musk. Here though, our job is to talk about the cars it makes, specifically this one, which has caused the brand more headaches than any other in its history. But then perhaps you would expect that. It's one thing to build relatively low volume cars that sell in the 75 to 125,000 pound bracket, but it's quite another to make one for the volume market where per unit profits are lower and product scrutiny much greater. The Model 3 is that car, and on initial inspection, we think the signs here are good. Just as the Model S did in 2012, the Model 3 blazes a trail and sets new standards. It's the market's first fully electrified saloon, the first to offer a credible 300 mile WLTP rated range, and the first contender to bridge the previously yawning gap between mainstream and premium EVs. Almost as importantly in our view, it's the first really credibly handling car that Tesla's made. The first that in the right circumstances, you could really enjoy driving. A touch ironic that, given the amount of effort the brand's putting into fully autonomous tech. We're not getting carried away here. A uh, Model 3 can't reward at the wheel quite like the best of its European rivals. Of course it can't. It's carrying around an enormous battery pack. But this heavy car does a rather passably good impression of a much lighter one. And in its dual motor forms, it compensates for any further differences with Ferrari fast acceleration. What a product it would be with greater refinement, more feelsome steering, and a higher level of interior quality. Which leaves us, well, where? Now, unlike Tesla, we don't think that fully electrified technology is the only answer to the future of individual transportation, but it's the best answer we have right now. And at present, Tesla is delivering it in a way that makes the SUV-based EV efforts of other manufacturers look dull and derivative. Of course, the Model 3 has a much tougher job on its hands than the company's earlier models had, especially now that well-funded Far East makers are entering the EV market. But the American brand has the advantage of a head start and a pioneering mindset, both of which it will need in the years ahead. We think that the company's willingness to embark upon that absolutely enormous undertaking is just as admirable as the way that, with no previous experience, it's created a range of cars that are worthy of credible comparison with the world's best. This currently is the finest of them. It is a work in progress, certainly, but it's a contender that advances its art another small but significant step forward. You would have to like the cool, pared-back image of the Model 3 to want one, and you'd have to be forgiving of a few idiosyncrasies. But if none of that matters, then you'll find that what's on offer here is just as significant as it is ambitious. You'd expect that from the car that some said Tesla could never build. But it has, and you should try it. Whoa.